me back to Parley. That's what you're here for. He wants to make a trade, Captain. What kind of a trade? He wants to buy one of our women for a squall. <laughs> Quiet, all of you. This is serious business. Tell them we don't sell women. What's the captain doing? Your brother's trying to trade you off for a passel of Indian ponies. Oh, Tio, you're fooling. Why, Alice, why would I do that? Send him away. American frontier in the troubled years, when the wagon trains made their way through wild terrain peopled by marauding Indians, the finest mounted fighters the world has ever known. Here, a practical joke brings havoc and death instead of laughter. Brings to Captain Whitney, wagon master, as fearsome a decision as any commander ever had to make. Tonight's presentation, The Castaway. <laughs> They came over the rim. They've been following us, making no effort to hide. Uh, they've been trailing us for a week. Why are they out in the open now? Well, they're not hunting for trouble, that's for sure. Wouldn't see nothing but tracks and a little smoke. But they'll tell us what they want when they get around to it. Yeah. Howdy, Miss Abby. You're looking fine. Thank you. Having trouble, Dixon? Not me, Captain. You won't lose time because my wagon breaks down. I take care of my gear. More than I can say for some. So you've been telling me, ever since we left St. Joe. Have dinner with us, Captain. We'd be mighty proud. Thanks, Molly. Some other time. Fresh antelope steak. No, oh, but if you want to do me a favor, Show my sister your secret with a loaf of bread. Her last batch, we get a load of cannon with it. <laughs> How are you and Abby Dixon getting on? Oh, about the same. Both of you shy as a quail. So when do you get up nerve enough to say hello? Hey, look at old Banny Randall. He looks as hot and dry as an alkali flat. Hey, he ain't the friendly sort. Let's cool him off. Now, don't that make you feel better? <laughs> well, you gotta go fill it up again. <laughs> Come on, Randall. Did you take a joke? I don't want to fight you, Randall. I was just funning. You ain't gonna fool. Let me go. Let me go. Come on, let's be friends. Now, don't get me mad, Randall. I don't want to hurt Randall. you. 
I ain't gonna ask you again. Are you oh. gonna be friendly? Settle down. You and your fooling like on me. Now, what is this? It's no cunt driver. You're slopped a bucket of water on me. Is that true, Till? I guess so, Captain. But a little fun, it don't hurt nobody. Him and his jokes. Buckshot in a flapjack batter. Cactus in my bedroll. One morning I'll break his neck. There'll be no more. It better not be. That's an order, boy. One more prank and you'll walk to Oregon. With those who are too young to drive wagons, herd and stock. Captain! <laughs> Said they'd let us know. Looks like they're about to. Yeah. Well, you'd set great store on dignity, Captain. Worst thing we could do would be to try to make them hurry up. Or let me make the parley. That's what you're here for. to make a trade, Captain. What kind of a trade? That chief crazy is under on the horse. He's got plenty guns, plenty horses, plenty braids. Brag talk. But I'm afraid it's true. He wants to buy one of our women for a squall. <laughs> Quiet, all of you. This is serious business. These savages come as friends, but if you laugh at them, they can come back as enemies. Tell them we don't sell women. Or do they want to? What's the captain doing? Your brother's trying to trade you off for a passel of Indian ponies. Oh, Till, you're fooling. Now, Alice, why would I do that? <laughs> you know, I shouldn't wonder, but Abby'd look real pretty with Indian feathers in her hair. Send him away. where they had a picket fence, he'd be walking on it. That boy's all broke out with love, Captain. Showing off for that little sister of yours. Are you serious? Well, Alice is 17, a marriageable age in these parts. Want me to go after him, Captain? No, looks like whatever he was up to, it's all over now. <laughs> Everybody, let's get rolling. Douse those fires. Hitch up the rest of the wagons. <laughs> now, what was that all about? Well, they got horses, Captain. I thought maybe I could work out a swap. What I'd like is one like your scallywag there. He can carry the biggest man right all day and still have plenty left. This old hammerhead of mine. Quarter mile and he's got the heaves. Get on the wagon. We're moving out. Featherhead. Well, at least he knows horses, Captain. That one of yours is the only one I ever wanted to steal. Let's get him going. Looks like he didn't understand you. Ah, oh, he understood, all right. I wouldn't doubt but what that fence-walking kid changed his mind for him.
go. You better quit making eyes at that redskin. You're gonna end up a squaw. It's plain enough. He made a dicker, all right. He brought the horses and he's after the squaw. Tell him no. I'll tell him, but will he listen? Tell him he must have young men in his tribe do foolish things. Tell him we have fools, too. He'll understand. Would you and his moccasins? Selling women, we ain't got enough for ourselves. You're responsible for this. You made a dicker with that Indian. In fun, Captain, just in fun. In his mind, you made a bargain, and I had to break it. To him, that's bad faith. But what's worse, you made a fool of a chief in front of his braves, and that offended his pride. All the rifles we got, Captain, he ain't coming against us. Rifles, yes, but women and children also, and your foolishness has endangered all of them. Nothing will happen. That Indian's too smart to yank the bobcat's tail. I join you in that hope. All right, back to your wagons, everyone. We're still a long way from Oregon. I'll get a new driver. You're walking with the children herding stock. Why me, Papa? Why did he offer to trade me to the Indian? Of course, he ain't got good sense. But he'll pay for it. I'll have him laughing out of the other side of his mouth. You wait. You'll see. Anything else? Nothing, thanks. How's it look? Animals are quiet. But I don't like it. It's too quiet. I don't know what you mean. Think they're out there? You know it. They'll be here, all right. But how many? And how soon? I think I better be finding out. Keep your hair. That is a joke. He's no good. He comes of good stock. His father died in the service of his country. He was my aide. That's why the boy is here. I need two extra guards. Tom, Randall, would you get your rifles? I think it'd be best if we put out the fires and the lights. You women better. <laughs>
and Kathy just went to the shell. Keep your eyes open. Everything I own gone in flames. Where is he? Where's McLean? He's with Fitz and 20 others hunting our horses. He better not come back. I'll shoot him on sight. I swear it on the book, I'll shoot him dead. Don't. Not unless you want to kill me, too. The men are still out. Just two, Captain. Fitzpatrick. And tell McLean who brought us all this trouble. How many horses have we recovered? About half. It was a mistake to gather strays. We should have gone after the main party. We couldn't and protect the train. They could have circled back. The Utes are good at that. Riders coming, Captain. No one I met, no. He's worse than a mad dog. Look what he's done to us. If it was anybody else, you'd be the first to shoot. I promise you there'll be an accounting at the proper time. What luck did you have? Not real good, Captain. Our horses are draft animals. They're not ponies. Daybreak, we'll start after them. They couldn't run them too far. Captain, they didn't run them far. There's a piece of canyon out there, eight or nine miles, 200 feet deep. The youth stampeded our horses over the rim. That means we'll have to leave half the wagons, half the gear. Means more than that, Captain. It means big trouble. All right, men, tie her up. No drumhead hanging. It's a meeting. It'll be conducted as such. Now, who'll speak first? I'm a friend of Till's. Right now, I don't like him too much. But I do know this. He wouldn't hurt a soul on purpose. He's sorry and he could say if he talked all night. Besides, we thought it was funny when he did it. Not me. Monkeying with Indians is no joke any time. Anyone else? Two men dead. Four wounded. Half of us have to leave our wagons, plows, harnesses, tools. All for the act of a fool. Mercy for a thing like that? I say hang him now before he does it again and leaves our bones out here to bleach. You have the right to speak, boy. Them Indians been following us for a week. Suppose I'd done nothing. Couldn't they come after us anyhow? Your question, you answer it. I don't know whether they'd have come for us or not. I don't reckon anybody does. He fought well when the attack came. I ask you to remember that. That he did. Why wouldn't he fight? They were after his hide as well as ours. We've had enough talk. I say hang him and let's get done with it. Come on, let's take him now. Now wait. This isn't such a funny joke now, is it? Two men killed, four wounded. Ready, men? Pull. Now shoot the first man who pulls that rope. A second and a third. Put him 
majority wants. That's what we always go by. I'll shoot the first man who pulls that rope. The second and the third. Don't set yourself up so high and mighty, Captain. We elected you, Vagomaster. We can vote you out. You can. But until you do, I'm in command. And I'll kill the first man who pulls that rope. You lost a wagon, Mr. Dixon. I lost a man. But I can't find it in my heart to want to see this boy hang because of that. I say let him go. Do you want to take this murdering fool along so we can risk our lives again? No. But neither do I want to see this boy killed because he made a boy's mistake. It was a boy's mistake. We'll not take his life because of it. We're not savages. Untie him. Give me his gun. You're riding out of here on your own, boy. You're leaving in 30 minutes. 10 minutes to get your gear together. 10 minutes for goodbyes. Fitz will use the time that's left to tell you what you need to know to stay alive. He's getting off free? I make the decisions. If this bothers you, Dixon, you're free to saddle and ride anytime. You make the decisions. Brent. You've got things to do, boy. You better be about it. You're murdering Till, just as surely as if you put a gun to his head and pull the trigger. And you're doing it just to appease Mr. Dixon and his friends. What would you have me do? Keep Till with the wagon train. Every day, everyone who lost because of Till's bad joke would look at him and remember it. There'd be festering hate such as you've never seen. So you're sending him out to be killed? No, Alice. Believe me, I pray you'll be waiting for us when we get to Oregon. If he isn't, I'll hate you till the day I die. Having a command, Captain, is long a job. He has to go, Fitz. What are his chances? Well, if he gets as far as the Snake River, he won't be a boy any longer. He'll be a full-grown man. Mad enough and wise enough to go the whole way. Can he make it as far as the snake? With luck, and a real good horse. <laughs> McLean wasn't only a murderer and whelp, he was a horse thief as well. He stole your scalawag and left you this. Thanks for letting me know. Till's no horse thief. No, he isn't. But let's not tell them till later. He said to tell you he'd be waiting for us at the Dallas, where we crossed the Columbia and Oregon. Come on now. We've got a lot of packing to do. All right, let's get rolling, everybody. Remember, we're only taking half gear. We'll have to share wagons. Ben, Fitz, bring in the horses. Still a long way to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> 